last night there was a program called Famous Rich and Homeless, and um, it had so-called celebrities like Rosie Boycott, Hardy um, Singh, Coley, Coley, that's the one, yep. and um, oh, who else? The Marquis of Blandford, if you've ever heard of him before. Oh, he's famous. And James, famous. the Marquis of Blandford, mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, a failed tennis player, Annabelle Croft. Yeah. That was it. And um, basically, they were kind of playing at being homeless. And you saw them, you know, having to dig deep and um, stay on the road 24-7 for three nights. Now, it continues tonight um, with the second part of this. And various things happened in the programme. At one point, somebody gave 40 quid to Rosie Boycott. And she took it... <laughs> <laughs> she took it and um, she did give it to a big issue guy the next day. Um, but we kind of question in the ethics of exactly. that. Toby Kerr hyphen Og is not happy that um, the programme allowed that to happen. And also it, there was a bit of a conflict between James, um, the Marquis of Blandford and the producers because basically the TOF did not want to sleep rough. He kept on checking into hotels. He kept checking into hotels. And um, on the final night when he promised them that he would definitely stay out there, um, he basically just bottled it again, rang his wife and said, I'm not having a good time, dear. N nearly ended up having a street fight with Big John Bird, the founder of The Big Issue. He did, he did. But it ended up with him walking into the distance. Anyway, if you saw that programme and you've got anything you want to contribute, do let us know. But right now, now on the line, we're going to speak to Paul Atherton. That's right. Paul is a documentary maker who has spent time homeless in the past. And indeed, Paul, you do allow us to say this. You are actually homeless now, aren't you? I am indeed. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning to you. Uh, Paul, you saw the programme last night from both a documentary maker's point of view and then a uh, personal point of view. What did you think of it? Um, I I just couldn't believe it, to be honest. it was it, It's reality TV at its most extreme and vile, in my opinion. Um, basically, it wasn't telling anybody that we anything. It was just using the reality format, and they just applied it to homelessness. And I was slightly disappointed to see John Bird there, to be honest. I don't know whether he was expecting it to be a, a different kind of vehicle to what it turned out to be. Um, but uh, I think the Times this morning was saying that um, he thinks maybe uh, you know any publicity is good publicity, but uh, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. Isn't it often the way um, with documentaries, and you'll know this yourself, where... You know, people get involved with projects being promised that it will be about this, it will be about that, and then the finished product that comes out is a very different thing. Oh, completely and utterly. I mean, everything's done in the edit. And and often with a major broadcaster like the BBC, their editors will be driving it probably more than even the producers of the production company, which I believe is Love. Um, you're a documentary filmmaker uh -huh. uh, and you're a, a homeless. Why are you homeless? Ah, well, it's a, a very long story, but a catalogue of errors resulting in mistimings uh, and cash flow, basically. But I mean, you know, I'm sorry, I don't want to be unnecessarily cruel here, but, you know, listening to it from the outside, you think a documentary filmmaker who's homeless. I mean, how did how did that happen? I mean, what, you know, it's an extremely luxury, if you like, being a documentary filmmaker is a sort of luxury profession. It's not something that most people can do. There's millions of people who want to do it, very few who can do it successfully. I don't understand how you've got into this position, but part of me is asking, well, why don't you get a job where which, which can support you so you're not homeless? Um, okay, the, 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 as I say, it's a, it's a very complicated and long story, but suffice to say, I suffer with um, an illness called chronic fatigue. Um, I was residing, as Henry will tell you, very, very lavishly uh, in a flat in uh, Waterloo, uh, and I was in the process of making a film, and the reality of, of, of filmmaking in the 21st century for most people is that everything is done on a wing and a prayer, uh, on support of all your contributors, of, of the people that make these things, because often, um, you know, the, the money is not there to start off with. You know, BBC are not commissioning documentaries about homelessness. They're commissioning reality TV shows about homelessness. So the, the, the stream of funding and things like that. So when you make it, it's a, it's a matter of, of the love of the work. You don't make it as a commercial enterprise. Um, and... 
as I say, it, I, I was living in a flat that I wanted to take over. We had a very good deal on it. Suddenly there, there was a micro market and I was in the middle of a film and I just did not have the time to go searching for flats elsewhere. And this shows, Paul, the, the fact that you uh, can become homeless, that actually, as uh, others have said, you are only a couple of breaks away from going from a, a middle class profession or whatever, a lifestyle, to literally almost living on the streets or living in your car. What aspects of homelessness did not come across on last night's programmes? Because you heard from the producer who popped onto the screen a couple of times and then John Bird that they wanted to convey that. Yeah, well, I, I think, you know, the f first and foremost, is, is, it, it begs a question. I mean, the, the, the production company made, uh, in 2007, they made it fifth, Filthy Rich and Homeless, which was exactly the same principles, but they actually just used everyday people that, that were rich and they and had that attitude of, oh, well, why don't you just pull your uh, big strings up? And I actually thought as a social experiment, again, it was a reality-style television program, but as a social experiment, it had far more to say because it was approaching these people. They had nothing to gain by, oh, other than having their 15 minutes of fame, of course, by, by being there. But they, they, did, they, they were inflicted in it, and it really did open their eyes. And in opening their eyes, I think it opened the viewer's eyes. Now, this current one, because of the, the celebrity, and it was interesting to watch uh, Hardy sort of having to persuade somebody that he, he isn't who he said he was. And then also, <laughs> when we saw Rosie could get, get her money, all you could, from, from a, a filmmaker's perspective, all I was concerned about was this bloody great big camera shadow on the wall as this woman rushed off to get 40 quid from the cash point. And you're going, right, well, that's not real. And then they spend time talking about being lonely to a cameraman. <laughs> so, you know, it, the, the whole thing just seems so vacuous. <laughs> oh, dear.